I call myself a storyteller rather than a writer because for me, story is central. Um, and story is invitational. You tell a story and everybody gets to make the meaning. Chapter one, Jesse Oliver Aarons Jr. Baroom, baroom, baroom. Baripity, 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 baripity. Good. His dad had the pickup going. He could get up now. Jess slid out of bed and into his overalls. He didn't worry about a shirt because once he began running, he would be as hot as popping grease, even if the morning air was chill. Or shoes because the bottoms of his feet were by now as tough as his worn out sneakers. Where are you going, Jess? Maybell lifted herself up sleepily from the double bed where she and Joyce Ann slept. When I go into a classroom, I always ask them how many of them can play a musical instrument or sing, and many hands will go up. And I said, when your teacher or your conductor hands you a piece of music, is that music? No. Until you play your instrument or open your voice, it's only black squiggles on the page. In my books, until you open them and come to them with your ability to read, with your imagination, with your life experience, are nothing but black squiggles on a page between two covers getting dust on a shelf. So you're all my co-writers. I can't do it without you. I was born in 1932, so you can count and find out how old I am, in Xinjiang, China. I remember my first five years, almost five years of my life. I remember it idyllically. Now, my parents don't because terrible things were happening all the time in China. The Peninsula Hotel was, and maybe still is, one of the grand hotels of this city of Hong Kong. And the, of course, the very rich British, American, European tourists who were staying there found this lobby full of dirty women and children, and they were not happy with the scene. And my mother, she said, I. I watched them go by with sneers on their faces. And she was holding my infant sister, Anne, and she had Helen, who was just over 18 months old. And she said, they wouldn't even smile at the baby. What kind of person doesn't smile at a baby? And I was only five years old but I still know how it feels. And maybe the reason I write the kind of books I do is because there was a seed planted in the lobby of the Peninsula Hotel. And I don't want to forget that child, and I want that child to be in everything that I write. Who would like to be in charge of today's magic envelopes? Let's bust this bad boy open. 
Heck to the yes. So, why doesn't Jess show his drawings to his dad? How do you think it must feel to have to hide something you love from someone you love? It's a lot of hands. Let's start over here. It's probably hard, but it's also like, if you love them, then it's kind of heartbreaking if somebody actually does have to hide it from them. Every time his dad is near, he has to hide um, his drawings and his and his materials. Jess loves his dad, but he doesn't think that Jess's dad loves him. When when his dad really does, but doesn't know how to show it. If that one person, if that one person <clears throat> doesn't like it, I guess I'll just give up on my dream of being an artist and do something else. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make you, it doesn't, it makes you feel like you, you don't, you're not a part of something. I didn't know whether I was going to be a missionary or a movie star. And it shows you a little bit of the show off the nature of me. And I started writing fiction, not because I thought anybody would publish it, but because I love to read fiction. It's wonderful, you know, some books you read, you think, oh well, give up. You know, why are you bothered to write? Other books just impel you to do your own writing. The editor of this book, who was assigned as my editor, because I was an absolutely new writer that had been rescued from the slush pile, as they used to call it, and I was handed to the young editor who was just coming off uh, maternity leave. And Virginia Buckley and I worked together for 40 years. And from this very first book, when I was absolutely nobody, I knew that she respected me as a writer, and all she wanted from me was the best book I could write. What shapes the, the book is the right question. And of course, in Bridget de Arabithia, when Virginia got that book, which was just a cry of pain on my part. She said, is this a book about death or is this a book about friendship? I had thought until that moment it was a book about death. And as soon as she asked that question, I said, oh, it's a book about friendship. And she said, that's what I thought. Now you have to go back and write it that way. Who wants to jump in and get some reading done? But they both knew that the real giant in their lives was Jan Janice Avery. Of course, it wasn't only Jess and Leslie that she... She recognizes the vulnerability that comes with childhood. I think that that makes her able to, to share that in her writing. And she can do it in a way that still is child-centric. It's not like, here's the grown-up telling the child how to react when something sad happens. Um, it's, just, it's just an honesty that she has that makes it, I think, so powerful. He heard his dad start to pick up. Even though there was no job to go to do, he left every morning to work. He thought he might tell Miss Edmonds later that Leslie was a personal friend of a real congressman. She's won everything that you can win, right? She's won Newberries, she's won uh, National Book Awards. She had this run from like 1977 to 1981 where she won two Newberries, a Newberry Honor, and two National Book Awards, and it was for four different books. It's amazing, I can't think of anything like that happening today. It didn't occur to him until the car was passing Millsburg that he might have to ask Miss Ed Edmonds if Leslie could have come too.
On the way home into sunshine, Miss Edmonds told funny stories about going to college one year in Japan. A couple of years ago, there was um, a girl who, a fourth grade girl, who said, "I want a book that's going to make me cry." And so I went over to the shelf and I took off *Bridge to Terabithia* and I handed it to her and I said, "You know, this book made me cry." <laughs> He squinted his eyes as though trying to peer down a dark drain pipe. Didn't even know what question to ask them. What? He tried to begin. Brenda's pouting voice broke in. Your girlfriend's dead and Mama thought you was dead too. Hold up! Well, I still remember where I was when I <laughs> finished that book. You know, this, remember the chair that I was sitting in and I remember um, when you reached the end of that book, it just... Um, you love the characters in the book so much, and um, and then to have you know one of them, one of them die is uh, something that I'll always remember as a reader. Everything indicates, from all the information that we have, that our friend Leslie, in the book, has drowned and died. I've heard her say the deeper a writer is willing to go within themselves, the, the more likely that the reader is going to go with them there and, and meet them there. The exposure of your deepest self, which is what real writing demands, somehow I seem to have the courage to do that. And and you know you're going to expose yourself, and you know there are going to be people who will despise you. And they're not just despising your book, because it's you on the page. After the fact, we look back on these books, and um, you know, there's just sort of like a, a universal acceptance and love. But at the time when they're coming out, they're kind of challenging. I take very seriously uh, a letter that says it would be better for a millstone to be hung by around your neck and you to be cast into the deepest parts of the sea for what you've done to children by writing this book. I mean, it, makes you, it gives you pause, let us say. People are afraid of change, grown-ups especially. They're worried about... Um, they're worried about things in books that maybe weren't in books when they were kids. And for whatever reason, they think kids can't handle it, which is silly. I was at a conference once, and a woman stood up, her face flushed. Your books are not for children, she said. No child could understand them. They're too intense. I would have felt properly judged, except that that very week, a teacher had sent on a copy to me of a book report on the great Billy Hopkins, written by the, in quotations, bad boy of the class. The boy had written, this book is a miracle. Mrs. Patterson knows exactly how children feel. She's always in, in service of the story, and I think any other ulterior motives, whether it be a message, you know, like a didactic sort of message, I think that would sort of be betraying the story in a way. It's been really my Christian brothers and sisters who have attacked me or banned me because I'm not Christian enough. I mean, I've had, you know, earnest Christians say, if only Leslie had time to say before she died that she loved Jesus. Uh, what kind of God are you worshiping? <laughs> You know, it's not the God I know, not the God Jesus knew. Hello. So I want you to have your notebook, so I'd like you to open to a fresh page. Yes. I want you to write at the top, Dear Leslie. Dear Leslie. Dear Leslie, dear Leslie, why did you go to Terabithia without Jess? That must have broke his heart and made him cry and, and betrayed. Why did you swing without Jesse? He is there to keep you safe. And 
to be a king. We just read the chapter that said you might have died. So I just want to say, if you are dead, I'm very sorry. How is heaven? How did you die? A gazillion question marks and exclamation marks. What did you hit your head on? Instead of heaven, did you go to Terry Leslie? 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 Um, are you dead? Please ask the angels to give Jess good days and joy. Goodbye, my dear friends in need. Rest in peace, Leslie. You will never be forgotten. Right now, Jess is crying, and I am crying on the inside. Even though I'm happy on the outside. It is useless to pretend to children that all is well in our world. But cynicism, as Malone says, is the easy way out for writers confronted with the world as it is. And there are writers for the young as well as for the old who choose this route. But we who are people of faith must seek against all odds to wring meaning out of what would be easier and in the world's eyes more realistic to dismiss as meaningless. It is precisely because we have faith, because we believe in a God of justice and steadfast love, that we find ourselves in a painful, sweating, wrestling match in which the adversary is God. From time to time, people ask me why, with all my theological training and religious background, I don't write Christian books. But you see, I think I do write Christian <laughs> books. For I believe that stories truly told can give us a key to unlock for each other those thoughts that do often lie too deep for tears. I got the most amazing letter, two pages typed, single-spaced, from a young woman, a 16-year-old in California, who wanted to tell me how much Bridget Terabithia had meant to her when she was a 10-year-old, who was unhappy because her parents had painted her room pink who knew she didn't fit. She didn't know what was wrong with her. And then she read Bridget to Arabithia, in which the girl does boy things, and the boy does girl things. And she realized you could do things differently from other people and be different from other people, and it was okay. And she said it saved her life. And she went on and on and on, and she finishes up saying something like, you probably didn't want to hear all this about a 40-year-old book from a queer kid in California, but I just had to tell you how much it meant to me. Well, I just burst into tears, you know? And I wrote her back and I said, this is what's the wonderful thing about being a writer. The reader brings meanings to your book that you didn't dream were there. And I just am so grateful to you. I've come to learn that God adores his creation, and that includes me and you and everyone. And I try to think of that <laughs> on a daily basis. When I wrote Bridge to Terabithia, my original title was The Bridge to Terabithia. And then the more I thought about it, I thought, well, in the end, there is a literal bridge across that creek. But of course, Leslie's a bridge for Jesse, and Jesse's a bridge. So there are a lot of bridges. The teacher's a bridge, even the parents 
or bridges. And so it seemed to me just bridge to Terabithia, and you could choose your bridge. <laughs> I mean, she's just such a great example of what a, what a writer should be. Her stories connect with kids today just as well as they always have. And I think it's, um, I think it's honesty. I'm a writer for children. What is my role as meaning maker in a world gone mad? It was a week after September the 11th. We were finally having to give up the last faint hope that Peter, our son John's brother-in-law and close friend, would be found somewhere unconscious in a hospital or wandering senseless in a distant locale. I looked at my calendar and was distressed to see that I was slated to speak to middle school students in Heinsburg, Vermont the next day. What was I going to say to 12 and 13 year olds in the midst of this grief and terror that had not only our extended family but our whole nation in its death grip? Finally, I decided to start by reading them a passage from Bridge to Terabithia. That night, as he started to get into bed, leaving the light off so as not to wake the little girls, he was surprised by Maybelle's shrill little, Jess, how come you still awake? Jess, I know where you and Leslie go to hide. What do you mean? I followed you. He was at her bedside in one leap. You ain't supposed to follow me. How come? Her voice was sassy. He grabbed her shoulders and made her look him in the face. She blinked in the dim light like a startled chicken. You listen here, Maybelle Aarons, he whispered fiercely. I catch you following me again. Your life ain't worth nothing. Okay, okay. She slid back into bed. Boy, you're mean. I ought to tell Mama on you. Look, Maybelle, you can't do that. You can't tell Mama about where me and Leslie go. She answered with a little sniffling sound. He grabbed her shoulders again. He was desperate. I mean it, Maybelle. You can't do that. You can't tell nobody nothing. He let her go. Now, I don't want to hear about you following me or squealing to Mama ever again. You hear? Why not? Because if you do, I'm going to tell Billie Jean Edwards you still wet the bed sometimes. You wouldn't. Boy, girl, you just better not try me. He made her swear on the Bible never to tell and never to follow. But still he lay awake a long time. How could he trust everything that mattered to him to a sassy six-year-old? Sometimes it seemed to him that his life was delicate as a dandelion. One little puff in any direction, and it was blown to bits. I don't know about you, I said to those children, but I'm feeling a lot like a dandelion today. I could see them visibly relax. Here was an adult willing to tell the truth. We can't make meaning for anyone, much less for the young, unless we're first willing to tell them the truth. So what are your so. questions today? Dear Catherine, dear KP, dear Mrs. Patterson, I love Bridget to be at the so much exclamation mark, exclamation mark, exclamation mark. I would like if you would make Bridget Terabithia two, three, four, and five. That's the first paragraph. Dear Catherine Patterson, I think the book had a lot of feeling and heart in it. And I liked the book so much, it was one of my favorite books. I also liked how you made the book feel like people are in it. From Gabriel. P.S. I hope you're feeling well. I have Dear Catherine Patterson. The characters are amazing. You feel really like you're in the book, kind of. Why do I have... So, 
so many why questions. Dear Katherine Pedersen, I love your book. I was very sad when Leslie died. Do you like tacos? I do. I also like pizza. My favorite color is teal. What is your favorite color? From Charlotte. I love the book. So now I want to ask you some very important questions. Do you have any pets? And if you do, are they anything like PT? Your story is amazing, and I and I'm and I love the book Bridge to Terabithia. You made the best story I've ever read. You've ever read? Mm-hmm. I know my gift is limited. I know I cannot stand toe to toe with philosophers or theologians and solve for myself or anyone else the problem of evil, either natural or moral. But we who are writers can tell a story or write a poem, and where rational argument will always fail, somehow miraculously in metaphor and simile and image and simple narrative, there is both healing and illumination. We write stories not because we have answers, but because we have questions. The writing of the story is the wrestling with the angel. And I thank you. Thank you.